good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good to see y'all, and hopefully we'll all have a good conference and uh, make it home safely tomorrow. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm Dave Freeze, and uh, just happy to be here. This is Joy Massey. And I'm we're sure you are Dave Freeze. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> and so we're going to do the team talk today on this presentation, and uh, I didn't know if anybody would introduce us or not. This is our first time to attend uh, this national uh, conference, conservation conference, and so we're happy to be here. We didn't get to come in until late last night, and these are in our packet, so I think one of our jobs today, too, if you need CCA credits at the end of the talk, come see us, and we'll let you sign off on this, and then that way we they can... They need to sign in and sign out. There's two places for them okay. to sign. Okay. So... They're supposed to sign it twice. So if you, anyone here needs to sign in, we'll put this at the back of the room. If you don't mind, sign in. When we get up, they need to sign in. They know the routine. That's right. <laughs> so with that, uh, I do want to apologize. We're running a little bit later. We thought we were able, we're going to be able to pull down some yield maps. We got one, but didn't get to. But had a little, we got one of them. So you'll see those a little bit later. So. Um, again, we're happy to be here at the conference in Memphis and great place. And uh, first thing I'd like to say, this has been a great uh, program, working uh, team approach, and Massey Farms have just been wonderful to work with. I moved to Greene County about four years ago, and every year since then, we've been able to do some type of a uh, irrigation or conservation type program, working with Joy, uh, his uh, late father, and then Brad, and Dale also is one of the other uh, producers that helps out some there on the farm. It's been a great partnership. And uh, today, of course, we're going to talk about the bedded study we did for two years in that area. Again, this was a partnership, and it took uh, several different groups working together. Not only Massey Farms, but Dr. Henry is our irrigation specialist, hydrologist. I'm not sure exactly what type, but uh, he played a big part in helping us set up the study and providing equipment. The local NRCS office and Greene County Conservation District also uh, important components in ensuring that we had uh, pieces in place we needed to be able to conduct this study for the two years. And so with that, I think I'm going to pass it back to Joy, and he's going to tell you a little bit the next three or four slides, and we're just going to kind of kick it back and forth. You know, uh I'm not sure if I you know how to operate that. I don't know if okay. I have a license for that. All right, let me see. I don't know how to do that. Lay it forward, backward, okay. and then that's a pointer. Okay. So uh, many of, in Greene County, at least, understand that what we're talking about when we're talking about 60-inch and 30-inch beds. Uh, there's many different opportunities and opinions on when and where you should use that, and that's what this, this part of this study is about. Uh, we've done both 30 and 60-inch beds. Uh, of course, you can see this is not actually our better over here. We got another picture of it later, but everyone uses the same thing. You can uh, you can choose 30, 60 inch beds on your on your better roller. Uh, and our reason for this study, as it said there at the bottom, is to understand better how we can how or if we are able to completely saturate the bed on a 60 inch bed versus 30 inch. Uh, we know the pros and cons of, of both ways, and we can discuss those as, as we go through here. Uh, again, this is just a, a picture of a field of, of how we set up the poly pipe. Uh, we punch with the, I think we come into the, the uh, hole selection later in the, in the, in the talk, but we'll, we'll do half the field with 30 inch and half the field with 60 inch beds. And of course, Dr. Henry, have to set up with the uh, data loggers, the uh, moisture sensors. We had uh, uh, quite an array of uh, technology and uh, firmware and hardware that's available to us to do this. Yeah, on the on the site for 15, we we done this both in 15 and 16. On the site in 15, uh, the soil map is uh, much more variable. We have uh, sandy. Uh, silt loam all the way to in the very corner there would be a, a gumbo type soil and so we, we we went from one end to the other in this uh, uh, 
Uh, let's talk about too the, the precision leveling that we've done here. Uh, this was a, an old sand blow uh, that was formed back in the, uh, well, actually in the, the days of Christ. Uh, the Mississippi River ran backwards from, from that earthquake and it formed this, uh, this sand blow that's uh, very near the Cache River and that there were some of the cuts in this field along this edge here that was 12 foot. There was some uh, 10, 11 foot cuts here and uh, uh, six, seven foot cuts here. So we, we moved a lot of dirt in this field back over the years. And uh, right away you'd think, well, you've, you've cut that and you've changed the, uh, the, the soil texture across the field. And we did a lot, but we actually helped the productivity of the field, not just from an irrigation standpoint, but from a fertility standpoint. The soil was better underneath than it was on top. It, it had been raped for years and no nothing added to it. So as when we leveled it, immediate uh, yield advantage to, to that. Uh, I think that's about all there. Yeah, when we set up the uh, uh, poly pipe, talk a little bit about how the, the field is leveled. You can see the, the levees run north and south. So therefore that makes uh, for lack of a better word, a cross slope in a poly pipe. Uh, it, from here to the very north end was three tenths of rise, and this is the only riser we have in the middle of the field. So, so with pipe planter, you're able to put that uh, rise in the pipe in, and it will automatically adjust the hole for what length or size of the hole you need for the length of the rows. And it's the same going here. It's it's uh, it's downhill going this way, of course. So we had a surge valve in the middle here and a surge valve in the middle here. And basically we were watering like a 25 acre set, a 20 acre set and a 20 acre set and maybe an 18 acre set here. I forget exactly the acres, but we had four different sets surging both ways. That's the two risers are located where the pins were. That's yes, the yeah, there's a, there's a riser here. Uh, yes, a riser here and a riser right in this corner right here. Yeah. Anything else when you come there, Dave? This is a long field. Very long field, and that's uh, uh, from past experience in this field, we knew without the surge valve, uh, you're not going to get the, the water through. So uh, there's, there's a lot of data has been collected here, a lot of understanding from other folks before it ever got here. But I, the surge valve made the difference in being able to get the water through on either one of these here. It wouldn't have worked very well. It's, uh, I think, 2,800 feet from here. And, 2,500 feet from here, something, I forget exactly the number, but they're very long rows. Uh, of course, the, the planting, tillage, all uh, pretty self-explanatory. You can see here, we uh, that's the 60-inch bed, we're putting two rows on top of each bed. Of course, the 30-inch, I don't think we have a picture of that. Uh, one, one row on top of each bed. We, we do plant uh, mostly Pioneer seed, uh, so this, this was actually four seed production, planted in 48 P53s, good emergence, got good stand. I don't remember anything else in particular there, Dave. And this is where we uh, would get to the to the actual results, and Dave will will talk more about the, the irrigation part. So. Uh, We've seen that in the 15 crop, uh, on the 30 inch beds was a slight disadvantage, the 60 inch beds was a slight advantage. Uh, we calculated that according to weights and uh, they used planometer to actually measure the length of each row because every row changed. Uh, so pretty precise on how we collected the data, uh, moisture each sample. We took to Sanders where we were actually delivering the, the seed beans, got the, got the moisture on that. And there's the results. The uh, yield on the 30 inch was 67, yield on the 60 inch was 70. This is the one we do have actually have to give them out. Uh, the other one we didn't, we weren't able to get. Uh, what's interesting about the this, you can see the line in the middle. Uh, that is actually where I just I left that out, cut two rows, so we would have a definite divide line between the, the two. And the, as Dave and I were harvesting, it was very obvious. We were running along 50, 58 bushels, 
57, 58 bushels along this side, cross over, immediately went to 60, 62 bushels. Uh, so it was very obvious uh, at, the, at the difference there was there. Many variables that would, that would go into why that might be the case. There's, there's uh, the difference in uh, the soil textures. Uh, also, uh, we didn't mention on the 30 inch beds we're having trouble. I heard someone in the room talking about this a minute ago. The 30 inch beds were having trouble with erosion or, or sloughing off of the sides. So you have trouble with getting the water through. That may have very well been uh, the case here. You can see this spot. Uh, I know that from, from, from being there that that's what caused that. This actually I don't know what caused. Uh, that wasn't an irrigation. That's probably a soil fertility <coughs> problem. But this here is more than likely where the beds had sloughed off and the water didn't get all the way through. So uh, up here at the, at the east end of the field, that's going to be more of a soil type. This was all sand and deep cuts right through here. The very bottom down there, you said there was a little. It was a yeah, little this heavier. is the gumbo. This is the gumbo that you just. It's hard to water sand and not overwater gumbo. You know, it's hard to do sometimes. And in that picture, the wide beds are at the top. Yes, I didn't point that out. Yeah. Questions along the way here. Feel free to ask. Uh, and that's pretty well summarized what we just said. Uh, sandy areas likely have a lot better percolation getting down through the soil. Uh, wicking across the beds was better in the in the sand. Uh, yes, the, let's talk about the wide beds being better for uh, aeration early in the year. We got a lot of rain. Uh, I think you're going to talk about that in a later slide here. I think that the amount of rain we got. We got a lot of rain in June and July. <laughs> And I think the wider beds, not sloughing off and that kind of thing, probably help that. that your soil aerates better, uh, it'll dry quicker when the, when the water gets off. So, and there's what we talked about, the water jumping over the beds. So, so you didn't rerun your water furrows or anything? After not after planting, no. After planting, no. nothing no. else done. That's right, yeah. yeah. And that is an option. That, that is something you could do. Uh, if, if, they, if they clog up. Yeah. Yeah. When did you run your beds? In the fall or in the spring? No, in the spring, January, uh, June 1, when we planted, it's uh, when we ran the beds. It's got a lot of rain. It was at 21 inches, I think, this year, which is in yeah. the sliders. And a lot of that was up front. It's yeah, this would be, season. Dave would have a lot more uh, to talk about with the, talking about the water and how, how we used it and how we collected the data and that kind of thing. On the yields too, one thing we want to point out on that is it's non-replicated. It was just side-by-side yeah. -side comparisons in the field. I know some academia is here and they're really, you know, before you can say something significant, it's supposed to be replicated. Right. And and we, we, we wanted to point out, we saw the true difference on the combine. Yeah. Did you water ever metal on a 30 inch? Yes, we did. did yes. One last water, and I think I saw on the 30. That's correct. I, I probably was supposed to point that out. But, uh. Yeah, we're going to talk more about that as we get into the water stuff. And uh, we did get a lot of rain this year and didn't realize we'd be giving this talk. So some of that data was two years back. And uh, on the Wagnet online, that all that information, it gets wiped away after so, so long. So you can go back and grab some of the pictures and the rainfall. Uh, pictures that we wanted from 2015, but we got them for 16. Um, but anyway, uh, Joy's already talked about how the, it was set up on in two sets, and then the surge valves are just invaluable. And uh, you'll hear this in other talks. And then those of you who've ever used the surge valves on odd-shaped fields, you know that you're going to have to set the amount of time. If it's longer furrows on one side, like on this field, we are getting. 58% on one side and then it would flip and only irrigate 42% of the time and that would make it water out evenly. So pot, ready. pot planter will do a good job yeah. of figuring that for you. Um, here is a couple of our partners. Uh, Josh Barniel on the left is with the Green County Conservation District and unfortunately we just lost him in our CS hiring. Adam Meads, uh, he's here at this conference and was part of it too. 
And so they, again, are, every time we've done a project, they'll come out and help with the uh, determining the flow using the, the, the pipe planner and, and all that stuff. But so we really needed to know how much water we were using out there. That was our whole goal and see how much we were feeding the soybeans. And so in, on this sandy side, uh, we did irrigate uh, three times on the 30 inch rows for a total of six acre inches. And so that's two acre inches per time. That's pretty good on a sandy site. That's we're getting out a pretty good amount of water. And it tells you the different uh, dates that we were able to irrigate. On the 60 inch beds, we did four irrigations. And uh, the reason we were able to do that, of course, you irrigate one side of the field and then you get a rain and before we could irrigate the 30s, then our rain came. And so, um, uh, it shows the dates there, uh, but it's if you look at the top bullet and then the third bullet, each time we irrigated on the 30 inch beds, we were able to apply 25% more water. On, so a, we, on a wet year, that may or may not be a, a big factor in a drought year when we're really dry, that could be a pretty good factor. And it could hurt you in a wet year because yeah, you more than likely it did saturate your beds too much. And the question in the back of our mind always is, that field was so variable, it, about 50% of it is sandy, sandy mix, and then some of it, the silt loam, the, the wick rate would be a lot slower, and you said that the one corner had a little more clay content. So uh, where we put moisture sensors, we you can't put them all over the field, so you just have to pick one spot you think is the most representative, which we pick the sand, because it's going to be the most limiting. And those silty areas get a wick all the way across everywhere. We can't you know, walk the whole field, so that was one question. Got any more on that one, George? No, any question there? Yeah, feel free to ask us questions as you go. How, how long there. did you run each surge valve? I mean, how, um, many, how many switches did you have to use to get it across the field on the long side? It's, I have to go back and look. We've got all the data, but it's been two years ago. And I'm thinking we ran 20, 21 hours to be able to irrigate out. It's more than likely going to be some multiple of eight because we like to sleep eight hours. Yeah. But <laughs> with, you know, it's probably going to be like 24 or possibly at 18 we might come in the middle of the day and switch it. But it's probably going to be around 24 hours, 18 to 24 hours. Can one side water faster than the other one, I mean the 30 inch or 60 inch? Well, yeah, you're going to water out faster on the shorter rows. Because well, in the, I'm the, sorry, the, the furrow. Yes, yeah, exactly. yeah, you will. You'll, you'll water out faster on the on the wider rows. Okay. Yeah. What's the slope on this field? Do you feel? It's a it's a tenth to the west. Yeah. And so on the moisture sensors, uh, the way Dr. Henry set this up throughout the state and the different counties, he was working with uh, uh, this test. Uh, six inches, twelve, eighteen, and thirty inch depth. And uh, what we did on the 30 inch, 30 inch beds, we found one representative row about two thirds of the way down the field, I think, Joy. And then we skipped across the middle a few yards, maybe 50 yards away, where it was similar. Look, the soil was pretty similar. And in the 60 inch beds, we, in the row, we put four, those four sensors at those depths. And then we went right between two rows. Uh, to, well, we, we moved up about 10 or 15 feet in the row and went right between the two rows on that bed. Because one of the big questions, can we whip this moisture, all, this irrigation water, all the way across to, when we uh, water the field? Uh, and then, of course, the, you seen the picture earlier of the data logger and everything. It was all set up, and we just kept records throughout the year. We could go in and look at any time. Is there anything else we need to say on that picture? So. so this pretty much shows that actually is, I think, that, I think that is, that is the field. The site. That yeah, that the is the field. And I thought we moved those sensors up, but I guess we put them right next to it in the center. And so this is Dr. Henry on the right and one of his uh, summer workers. And uh, Dr. Henry also was able to use a... I think you already said, where in the field did you put those? Are they 
about two thirds of the way down. About two thirds of the way down. And uh, in a sandier it, part of this hole, it was. It was in one of the wide hill sandy loam areas uh, because that would be the most limiting uh, spot where you would need to trigger an irrigation first. And uh, and it was more, probably the most representative. I think it's 52 percent of the field. And uh, if you look in the soil web survey, 48 percent of it was the Bolivant complex, but. Uh, even then, in some of those areas, you had some some sand texture. But at a sandy location, the, the, the soil sample was collected right around this area where we put the moistures. And Dr. Henry sent that in for analysis to determine the wicking rate. And from that analysis, he came back and let us know what cinnabar levels we should trigger our irrigations. And so. I think a safe, there was a 45 level and a 70 level, and the 45 level would be if you were more uh, conservative and wanted to make sure you didn't, the crop got the, the water, and if you wanted to be a little more... Push it a little bit. Yeah, well, let's wait till 70 centibars, and I think we're all getting more comfortable. We can wait longer to irrigate. If we've got these sensors in the ground, we know what moisture's there, uh, then... I think, we're, at least I am, but I know that year it's like, oh, that's sand, we don't want to stress it at all, and Joy and I, let's water it today. We probably pulled the trigger a little bit early every time yeah. we watered. So we may have saved an irrigation each year if we had been more patient. Yeah. So, so anything else we need to talk about on that slide? But that is the actual video <coughs> there, and it shows the sensors we put them in, I think, somewhere in the middle of June. So this is some of the information about the soil moisture sensors, uh, where we had them on the 30-inch beds. And if you look at the three irrigate bullet one, the three irrigations we did that year, if you look at the average readings across those three irrigations for the six-inch sensor and the 12-inch sensor, you can see 37 centibars and 19 centibars. That's under our trigger so again we were pulling you know we, we were making sure we got our water out quick enough and so we might have stretched it another day or two uh, in hindsight um, on the third bullet if you look at the 18 and the 30 inch sensor readings average across all the irrigations on the 30 inch beds uh, we kept the soil profile it, it had the moisture there and so when we were irrigating we were irrigating, we were replenishing the topsoil. Um, one thing, if you look at the chart online from Wagnet, uh, you could see that the subsoil moisture was able to hold through the middle of September. And then, uh, so that was, Dr. Henry encourages, as we get later into the season, let that subsoil feed that soybean crop and finish it off and save the energy, save the expense, save the time. And it really did uh, work that way here. And you can see in late September, we could have pulled another irrigation based upon our six and 12 inch readings, but we knew we had moisture at 18 to 30 inches deep. And so we let that finish off the soybean crop and avoided a late irrigation. By that time of the year, the, the roots are deep and they're, right. they'll go down and get the moisture. You might as well mine the moisture that's down there rather than pump it. So, so this, this program, I think, helped open my eyes and to that. So. Okay. The 60-inch beds, basically, at this site, the same thing. If you look at the soil moisture sensors that were in the soybean row, the readings are pretty similar when we pull the trigger on irrigation. Uh, you can see those numbers were 34, 18, and then the subsoil moisture, we had still a lot of it. So we probably could have waited a day or two. The interesting thing and one that we really wanted to watch was, was that in the center between the two soybean rows on the top of the bed, how was the soil moisture readings there? And you can see they were pretty much identical, pretty close. And so that told us then that the irrigation water was wicking across, rainfalls were wicking all the way across that 60 inch bed at this site. Would you not say yeah, that's correct, Joel? 
Um, and then the last bullet in this slide, we saw a similar trend as far as our soil moisture as we got into later September. We were able to tap into the subsoil moisture and not put out a, a last irrigation and that's what we did. So, now we've switched to, to 16. It, uh, that's what has been good about uh, being able to do this is having multiple sites a couple different years. It's still not replicated to the research level but it, it, it helps on my farm to understand what they are gathering in research and to work with Dr. Henry and to understand what he's doing and, and why, he's, uh, why he's collecting this data has been very helpful to me. So on, on this field, it's, uh, it's just a 40 acre field and this, is, this one is truly a cross slope as you can see the, the levees run at an angle. Since this particular picture was taken, that's just a Google Earth uh, map, we've corrected the field. It still has a cross slope, uh, but it's the, the levees are all parallel instead of wide and narrow. You can see how those was, that it was originally leveled the first time in the 80s with the, or might have been even in the 70s with the old stick. Remember the stick where you cut it off and you paint the, paint the fields and all that? So that's how it was leveled and that's how those levees was actually ran that you see there. But since the internet, and actually right before we done this test, we, uh, uh, this demo, we, we corrected that field so it's, it's much better now. Uh, the, the riser, we may have a better picture there here in a minute, but the riser for this field is in the middle. Uh, I think it's the next picture. This is okay. more of the soil. Yeah, this is just talking about the soil type. And it, yeah, this is uh, a much more of a silt loam soil than the original site was. Yeah, here we go. So uh, Josh has to set this up in a uh, pipe planter. Uh, yeah, there's, there's a riser here, a riser here. And I might add something to, about both fields here. Uh, the first field we looked at, the uh, flow rate on the well is about 12, 1300 gallons a minute. This one is about six, uh, seven, no, it's seven one. It was about 700 gallons a minute. So uh, that requires a little bit more uh, detail in pipe planning and, and how you set it up. So uh, what we've done here, we basically had four 10 acre sets and we surged both sides uh, and also pipe planter, you use it to uh, get the right hole size because the pipe is not flat all the way along this end. So it's, uh, uh, forget, you know, from the east to west was a tenth per foot. I don't think it was that much. Maybe you can see there, it, it was probably a half a tenth. Uh, I should have should have looked at that a little closer maybe, but I think it's probably closer to a half tenth fall from this corner to here. But as you can see, the riser is not in the high spot of, of each 10 acre set. So uh, again, pipe planter is just a, a valuable tool for that. Uh, that might be right, a foot of fall? No, that wouldn't be right. It's, it's gonna be closer to six inches of fall across the floor. Uh, one thing on that picture too, you might point out that one, that one corner was a low corner. Yeah. Uh, I wish we could have got the yield map up on this one because that, yeah, that tells that story very well. But uh, the, all the water runs to this corner, and this again is the gumbo clay into the soil uh, field. That just, like 90% of our fields are, it seems like it's the way it goes. But, uh, that's that's, that's a, a typical thing. Yeah. Up in the uh, Mississippi Delta where I am. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. This end. It's going to be different than end. the other end. It's always clay on the low end. Yeah. Then that gets back to your mark. Right. Something. Yeah. you got to pick an average somewhere there. You, you can't do it all off the sand end. You can't do it all off the, the gumbo end. you got to got to pick an average there somewhere for sure. Uh, let's see on this field, yeah, we've done the, the same way. The 60-inch beds was on the north, the 30-inch beds on the south. Yeah, that's what this song talks about. That's your actual better row. That is, that is ours there. It shows a little better picture of how you, it's actually set up there for the 60 inch when you want 30 you just drop them there. Every one of your neighbors runs those. Yeah. I mean, it's all the ground up there. Yeah. yeah. Again, got a good stand. As you can see, we had plenty of moisture, so we got a good stand. 
Uh, same thing on the yield calculations. We uh, weighed all the trucks, uh, adjusted it to a 13% moisture. Dave done a great job of measuring that all out. He had this wheel and measured it exactly, so there wasn't any guessing that the, that the acres and the bushels come off of it, and there's the results. Yields substantially lower in 16 than they were 15, and switched. So. This time we're a better yield on 30 inch than we were on 60 inch. Uh, probably some some of the variabilities in that would have been the gumball corner again is a, a larger percentage of the field because it's a 40 acre field instead of an 80 <coughs> acre field, so it had more impact on the 60 inch beds. Uh, and uh, Dave, I think yeah, we didn't get that yield map in there. That's what we were trying to load it before we started. Yeah. Let it go. Uh, I got it on my phone. I guess you can pass it around. You, you can see it real well in the in the yield map. The the low clay corner uh, suffered because of uh, a lot of rainfall. I think we talked about that here somewhere. But like, we got a lot of rainfall again in '16. Uh, that has probably been the the most discouraging thing about it. We didn't learn everything we could learn in two years because of the weather pattern that we've had those two years. And that was the side the 60 inches were on. That's, that's exactly right. The 16 inch bed was on the side with the clay. Probably affected the yield a little more than the other. And that, that's what that right there is talking about exactly. Uh, and again, we were able to get more water in the 30s than we were the 60s, and they recovered that a little better in a few minutes. I've got a lot of heavy ground. Yep. And it seems to me like the 30s works better. I'm using the, the beds as much or maybe more for getting rid of water as I am getting water Absolutely. on. And I'm even thinking about maybe going to 38s instead of 30. Right. There's there's some 30s in our area too that, for that reason. The bad erosion was a big problem in both years. Yeah. yeah the, the, the sloughing the of the sides yeah. on the 30s, that's that's the biggest issue with the 30s. And that's why most folks would like the 60s is just for that reason. Yeah, all the rain. You see the, the rain event in uh, August? That, that's what this is. So, you know, that you're, you're not going to gather a lot of data about irrigation with the, with the rain in. But uh, Dave has a, another graph in a minute that shows very well where we irrigated and exactly how it saturated the soil. Uh, yeah, we had to, had to take care of some sloughing there with that. Hey Joe, and did yes. you see by using the soil moisture that you're extending your days in between water? Absolutely. More than what you would do. As would, a would do without it. Absolutely. The, that that is uh, probably the most uh, uh, revealing thing about the whole thing is we're probably irrigating when we don't need to because you're, you're, you're just seeing it. And the second thing is is the fact that if if, if you take the time to plan with surge meters. It, or surge valves, you get the flow meters and you know exactly what your well's pumping, you know exactly how much water you're putting per acre inch. You stop over irrigating, in other words, water running out the, the lower end of the field when there's no reason. The, the uh, punching the correct size holes to get them all out at the same time, that's, that's, that's the where the water and, and the money savings is at for sure. But you're no longer on it like an every seven day schedule. Yeah. You have to completely rearrange your thoughts when it right. comes to irrigation right. and trust the, trust yep. the meter. Yep, absolutely. The, the biggest schedule is like we mentioned at the first is the eight-hour eight nap. We'd like to get the eight-hour nap, and then after that we can make everything work from there. Have you ever had a thermometer out there? We like did. Like it's better than that thermometer? We had thermometers. We had all the tools, but there's another going to be in at least one other talk today. I know the county agent from Arkansas County. I think their talk is entitled more tools. So we, we decided not to talk about those. We just wanted to focus more on what would happen, on what happened on the 30 versus 60 inch bed. But we felt like we did need to share some of the uh, flow meter readings, source moisture sensor data, because those are what guide you in, uh, in managing your irrigation. Um, one thing on the six, the, the yields on 2016, we did write the yield monitor to the combine again, and that yield monitor did show there was a true 
advantage on the 30 inch beds for yield over the 60 inch beds, even though those 60 inch beds did have the, the drainage on the, the bottom was not. The total, the total here was probably somewhat skewed from the from the clay soil, but it's very clear when you you drive this side on 30 inch beds <coughs> and you're making 55 bushels and you drive on this side and you go down to 51 or two bushels. I mean, that's, that makes it very obvious. That, that it's not replicated and it's not uh, justifiable from a research standpoint, but it's very clear when you're driving the combine and you cross one the other and it's, it's very obvious. It, I mean, it, you actually weigh that and you know exactly what it is. So That's what we wanted to make sure. We were right. looking right when we transitioned from the 30 to the 60 inch beds do we see a difference? So every pass with that combine, we took down the weights and we did it, what, four or five passes on each side, side. to yep. see what was in the center of the field where they met. What did we have a true difference? And we wanted to feel more confident then about the trucks across the whole field because of the bottom. Right. Uh, August 1st watering was it on the 60 inch bed, was it completed? <clears throat> and then how many days? Did it start raining that night and y'all cut it off or? Let's see. I think that's going to be in the, in the, the later one, isn't it? Uh, yeah, um, let's go back to the, right, right, let's just go back right here. Okay, so again, we started the season with this particular set of data and when we were asked to do this talk last summer, I'm getting old enough now, that was in a file, it was two years earlier, I can't remember when I did five minutes ago anymore, so it was going back and looking at the data, but in that particular write-up, we said that there were 11 inches of rainfall from when we started writing it down about the middle of June through maturity, but at, after the beans were planted, we still, I think, uh, got quite a bit of rain right there at the beginning and it caused all that erosion. Um, but I think the 11 inches is from when we put out the, maybe the soil moisture sensors and were able to capture it and had the online data. And that was where that 11 inches came from. So from planting to maturity, it might have been more like in the upper teens. Your specific irrigation the, the, on August 1st, I think we'll see that again here in a minute in another graph and it will show that okay. exactly the rainfall and the irrigation at that time. Yeah, so that's good. So I think our next slide. I forget exactly. Okay, so talk about the water use um, on the 30 inch beds. We did the three irrigations and there are the three times, which you'll be able to see in that chart in a minute that we're going to get to that Joy's referring to. And then on the 60 inch beds, we did four irrigations and again we got the rain right after the one like the year before. So two years in a row we watered the wide beds first and I think we were doing that by design because we wanted, you know, we knew we were putting out half as many furrows and so uh, but if you get a rain toward the end of that then you may not, that 30 inch bed may get held off on watering. Uh, we saw one thing to point out, it didn't matter whether it was a sandy soil or a silt loam, when you went to a 30 inch bed both years we were able to put out about 25 percent more water with each irrigation and so and that's not 25 percent more running out the tile at the lower end that's actually acre inches acre inches of on. water yeah so you know we were able to get 0.84 acre inches on the, the uh, 30 inch beds and only 0.68 acre inches per irrigation on our wide beds is that showing that you're not soaking to the middle of quite as well mm -hmm. Yeah, you're not completely saturating the soil, the complete profile on 60 inch beds. There's no way. We done the same thing in corn in 2010, split a field 30, 30, and 60. Yeah. The sandy field with a lot of ball to it. Yeah. 30, 60 bushel. Corn. Absolutely. That that in a in a normal year, not a drought year or not a wet year, but a normal year, absolutely, you're gonna you're gonna completely saturate the soil profile in the 30 inch bed and you're, and you're not in the 60s. And corn uses a lot more water so that there's no way you can get enough water out there anyway. I mean even on 30 inch beds you don't completely saturate it. You don't so, worry about overwatering corn like you would a soybean. Right, right, yeah. The other thing that comes into play there, of course doesn't happen in soybeans, is nitrogen utilization. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't worry about that in beans but in corn if you're watering on 60-inch bed, you put fertilizer someplace else. Yeah. 
You're going to lose it. The take of that fertilizer nitrogen is yep. much more reduced. At our site, we could have been a little more patient on our first irrigation because it rained like a day later. And so we were more patient, but if we had said, let's just really push this, we could have omitted our very first irrigation, and that's why that final bullet says the second and final irrigation for the ones we really did have to have them because it didn't rain after. And so they had the development of the crop and then the seed production later. The third irrigation on the on the 60-inch beds, we got a rain after that too. And so uh, in hindsight, could we have been a little more patient? So, But the second and the fourth irrigations were the ones that added to our crops here. Okay, I think the next slide, uh, this just shows the sensors going out again and it talks about how we place them. And we did the same thing with the L augers and unfortunately we weren't able to get sensors put into the middle of a wide bed and that's what we really wanted to do but it, it just didn't happen. I mean, put right in the row. only so many re resources available and we just didn't get that out there that year. Um, and so we weren't able to measure, uh, you know, in the middle of the bed and find that out. The results on the soil moisture sensors, how are we doing on time? We're getting, we're getting close. Um, and we're getting yep. toward the toward end of our top. So we did set our trigger higher because it was a silt line <coughs> still 100 centibars is where we would put out our water here. And again, the sensors work well. And uh, like we talked about there, we could have waited another day or two. This is the one I've been trying to get this to. Is, yeah, and this is, I wish we could have had taken some pictures back in 2015 and we could have shown showed you the same data here but what Joey was talking about you can actually see each of the irrigations so um, the yellow lines are your six inch moisture sensor the red lines are your 12 inch moisture sensor the blue line is your 18 inch soil, soil moisture sensor and the green line is your deep your 30 inch sensor well you can see with our first irrigation in uh, late June it, it pulled all of our moisture sensors back up. Okay, and then we rock along and we watered again on August or July the 20th, our second irrigation. And you can see our top, our six and 12 inch sensors, it pulled them back up to zero. It helped some on the 18 inch sensor, but it didn't go down to 30 inches. And so we're continuing to lose that subsoil moisture. Then we come to August and- It's the rain of it. Yeah. And this is a 30 inch bed. There's the monsoon. How many remember that? Where it rained and you cut through the air, though, it just stayed wet every day. And finally, that gave up. That even didn't went down 30 inches. I thought we thought it was interesting. And then this is our final irrigation you can see here in the middle of September. And the next slide shows what those sensors we had on the 60 inch beds. And it was similar. You can see each of the irrigations in June. We brought back up the the uh, six inch sensor. But Here's if you notice the soil profile, the, the lower profile does not get saturated with each irrigation. And then this is where we irrigated in July the 20th. And the monsoon period right in here. And then our final irrigation. So it's really good. I mean, these can help you so much chart on what's going on out in, in the field. If you get a representative field, you don't have to put them in all of them. You want to hit on that one, Joy? I think we have. That, that's your first year field right there. Yeah. Uh, in summary, uh, the, the 60 inch beds basically done a little better in 15, and the 60 inch or 30 inch beds done a little better in 16. Uh, probably the, the yield advantage would have been more had it been a normal, more normal year, a drier year. You'd have, you'd have probably seen. A little more difference. This is Joy's field, the 2015 field. You can actually almost see the sandy texture. And that is 30 inch beds there that we had some erosion at the top of the field. Yeah, that's what we just talked about. This is a couple of Dale, uh, Joy's brothers. This is Dale and Brad that were also involved in this great family affair of working with those guys. Big thing that, as far as the true data, when you said it, when you have 30 inch beds, you're going to be able to put out more water. At least we were up there across the two years, whether it was sandy or whether it was loamy, uh, we just got out 30 to 25 percent more water with each irrigation. Um, 
Any other questions? Sir, last slide. Uh, thank you. Getting close. The, the other thing that we noticed was that on our sandy field, and you probably noted that too, we were able to put out one and a half to two acre inches with each irrigation. So that field was more friendly to water. But when you get on the crusty and silt loam, and we we noticed this in two other years working with Joy, that you know, if you're able to put out much more than eight tenths of an acre inch each time, you're that's good. And so you have to have those surge valves to be able to try to get as much irrigation water out there as you need to. And I think Joy, you found that you just had to water more frequently. So that's the big thing we saw. Thank all the people that uh, have cooperated with us to do this. It's been a big help in uh, collecting a lot of information on our farm for sure. I have a great partnership in Greene County with the NRCS Extension and uh, the Conservation District. We we work well together, I think. Do you want to have any questions for George? Do you feel like <clears throat> bed height and row height for equivalent, furrow depth for equivalent? Did you use the same bundle? And Initially, yes. I think you have more sloughing because you have more soil exposed. You have more sloughing on the 30-inch beds. But initially, yes, it, it was the same. More questions? Thanks, guys. Thank you.